see like these are perfectly even slices, gorgeous dripping. Maybe that actually doesn't look so appealing, but they are very <laughs> easy. In fashion, a capsule wardrobe is a collection of classic interchangeable pieces that can be used to make the most amount of outfits out of the fewest amount of clothes. We wondered, could this concept be applied to kitchen gear? When it comes to the absolute essentials in the kitchen, you've got to start with a solid foundation. Today, Lisa and I are going back to basics. We will each show you core pieces of kitchen gear that will allow you to do the most amount of recipes with the fewest pieces of gear. First up, Hannah. All right, so I'm gonna dive into prep gear, but before I do, if there's something we don't talk about today that you're looking for a review of, check out americastestkitchen.com, because our team does great work and we review hundreds of products a year. All right, let's get into prep. Whether you're cooking or baking, you're gonna need to do some prep. And the most core pieces of equipment are cutting board and a knife. Let's start with a knife. This is an eight inch chef's knife and it's the most versatile knife in our knife roll. It can break down a chicken, it can crisply mince parsley, it does everything you want it to do. It's sturdy and durable and it is the most versatile knife, which is why we chose it as the one blade in our capsule kitchen. This is our longtime winner from Victorinox right here. This knife is actually from the meat packing industry. It's an industrial knife with a super comfortable handle. And this has won our testings for over 20 years. We tested it again and again and again, and it bested the rest yet again. And it comes down to the handle and the blade. You can see the handle right here. It's really smooth. It's comfortable to grip a couple different ways. That's called affordability. It affords you several different comfortable grips. And we love that. Whether testers had smaller hands, bigger hands, it was always comfortable and secure. Now let's go over to the blade. This was a really sharp blade. It's about 15 degrees on either side. And if you think of it, a wider angle is harder to push through things. A narrower edge angle means the knife moves more easily through the food. This is just a really durable, easy to use knife. All knives, you're gonna have to do sharpening. You're gonna have to sharpen them at some point. Now check out our, our collab with TikTok star Nick D. Giovanni for all the knife sharpening tips you might need. But this knife, you'll have to sharpen less than the rest. It's easy to get a nice sharp angle on it and it comes sharp, which is huge. You would think, of course the knife comes sharp. Well, some of the ones we tested, they didn't. All right, so after the knife, we have the cutting board right here and I have a wooden board and a plastic board. And no, I'm not gonna tell you one is better than the other because it depends on what you're looking for. Let me talk you through why you might want one over the other. Wooden board, look how beautiful this is. It is absolutely gorgeous. Nice soft surface to cut on, it feels good. It's beautiful to look at. You can use it for cutting, you can use it for a cheese board. You can be cutting over here and then have some ingredients over here. It's spacious enough, it's downright luxurious. Besides being gorgeous and easy to cut on, they are a little bit harder to clean because they're heavy and they also require some maintenance because you want to oil the surface so it doesn't split. Fun fact, our winning board by Teak House is made of teak, which has a naturally occurring residue called tectoquinones that repels water and keeps the wood conditioned. So you actually don't have to oil it as much as you might with other woods. Plastic boards are lighter. They can be easier to clean. This is definitely easier to turn around in a, in a sink if you're washing. This is our wooden winner by Teak House and this is our plastic winner by OXO. No, we are not sponsored by OXO. People always say that. They just happen to have some good products. I'm gonna slice a tomato right here. Beautiful. One thing I love about wood is like, it just gently receives my knife when I, when I come down to the board. It feels smooth, there's no clickety clack. I love, I love the feel of cutting on wood. But let's go over to the plastic. One thing I will say, I love this thing has silicone grips on it so it really stays put. I love that about this OXO board. Again, not sponsored. Okay, let's cut over here. Oh, did you hear that? See? You know, I don't hate it. I don't mind it. You might not mind it. But it definitely, um, it's not, you know, receiving me with that gentle warmth. I can hear a light and some scraping and clacking, but you know what? It's a heck of a lot easier to clean. You can put it in the dishwasher. So again, pros and cons. And you might say a whiteboard, that sounds like a bad idea, but actually we tested, we rubbed chili and adobo sauce all over all of the cutting boards we tested. We left them to check for staining, washed them, and this never stained. Other boards did. So it, while it looks white, it actually stays white, which is really nice. Okay, so let's talk about measuring gear. Measuring and accuracy is hugely important in baking. It's very important in cooking as well, but baking accuracy is huge. Let's start with measuring spoons. So we tested all different measuring spoons, and here are our winners. They won for a couple different reasons. First of all, 
accuracy. <laughs> if it's not accurate, what's the point? Uh, second of all, the selection of sizes. Some of the sets didn't come with an eighth of a teaspoon. We use that measurement in our recipes, so we wanted to make sure that the measuring spoons that won had all the measurements we needed. Second of all, material. Stainless steel is really nice because it doesn't cling to whatever you're trying to dump out of it. There's no static. It comes right out, which is really great. We also love the sturdy stainless steel design. So we didn't like, you know, some of the sets you could bend, they bent back when we were trying to scoop things. You don't want that. Sturdy design was key. And lastly, we really want to be able to sweep across the top. Let me show you this right here. So you want to be able to cleanly sweep across the top so you can get a level measure right there. That will ensure absolutely accurate results. Swip. Okay, on to dry measuring cups. Also huge for baking. Our winners here from OXO, again, not sponsored. So if you notice, these are actually magnetized. They're nesting together for compact storage, and they're magnetized, which helps them stay together in the drawer. Mine, I do not have this set, and they always are all over the place, taking up way more room than they need to. When they nest like this, they store more efficiently, which we loved. But that's not the only reason they won. Same thing as the measuring spoons. To get a most accurate measurement, you dip your measuring cup in and sweep across the top. So much like the measuring spoons, we love a straight handle that extends that you can cleanly sweep across the top so you know that your measurements are supremely accurate. These were also really sturdy. They had nice, big, clear measurement markings that were easy to read and didn't rub off. And that is why they won our testing. Let me go over now to glass. They're actually, you actually do need to have different measuring cups depending on what you're measuring. This is for liquids and this is for dry stuff and that will give you the most accurate measurements. Our winning liquid measuring cup from Pyrex is right here. It is glass. Um, it is super handy, super accurate, really easy to use, really comfortable. A lot of the ones, we tested all different measuring cups and some of them were inaccurate, which is like, what's the point? Again, like accuracy is always the first thing we check with measuring tools. All right, here's a quick tip. When you are measuring with a glass measuring cup, you want to bend down and check the level like this, if you're able, at your eyesight. That will get you the most accurate measure. When you look down on these things, you really can't see exactly where the line is at. So for the most accurate liquid measuring, make sure to bend down and look like this. All right, so next up, mixing bowls. I have our metal winners here and our glass winners here. We use mixing bowls all the time. We have stacks and stacks of them back there. And we use them for everything from mixing a vinaigrette to mixing pancake batter to melting butter. There literally are thousands of uses for them. This is the Volrath Economy Stainless, and this is the Pyrex Smart Essentials Mixing Bowl. It's nice to have a light bowl because you can pick it up a little easier to mix. They're super durable, and they conduct heat better. So if you're going to rig up a double boiler, a metal bowl is a great option. But over here to glass, glass is microwavable, which metal is not, which is really nice when you're melting butter, for example. It's a little heavier. Not quite as easy if you're going to be whisking and holding for long periods of time, but it is a great solid option. And these are super core pieces of a capsule kitchen that you will use again and again. All right, so as far as what you need for prep, these are the most basic essentials. Something to cut, something to cut on, things to measure accurately, things to mix in. Now onto Lisa with the cooking essentials. So Hannah talked you through all the prep essentials. Now I'm going to talk to you about what you need for cooking. First of all, everybody needs a skillet. Hannah and I had a long discussion about what would be the one essential skillet if you could only have one. We think the cast iron is the most versatile and it's at a very reasonable price. This is our winner. It's by Lodge. It's actually our best buy. We have a very pricey artisan pan that we totally love by Smithy Ironware. But for everyday essential capsule, this is a great bargain. It's under $50 and it is a 12 inch skillet, cast iron, nice roomy cooking surface, high enough wall so you can shallow fry little donuts or anything you want to make in here, fried chicken. It works for baking, you can bake cornbread and pies and cakes in here. You can also roast in it. We've roasted chicken and all kinds of things in this pan right in the oven. Because there's no other material aside from metal, this pan can go on your grill, it can go under the broiler, it can go in the oven, it can go on the stove top. It gives you so much versatility for one pan and that surface is endlessly renewable. If anything goes wrong with it, you just scrape it down, oil it up, heat it up, the oil will link and bond to the pan and make a natural nonstick coating that you can just keep renewing forever. So if you want to know more about taking care of this pan and about all the other skillets that we recommend, check out our GearHeads video called The Ultimate Skillet Guide. And that will tell you a lot about how we chose this pan, what we do with it, and how to maintain it. 
If you want to compare it to a nonstick pan, the nonstick coating does not last. It will wear off in a couple of years and you kind of have to throw it out and start over. This will always be nonstick and get more nonstick as you use it. So we, if we had to just pick one pan, cast iron is the way to go. So once you get cooking in your cast iron, we thought about the, the tools that you needed for your capsule kitchen. What are the minimum tools that can do the most things? So obviously you need a spatula. This is our favorite metal spatula. It's by Wusthof. It's a fish spatula, which is why it has this strange shape. It's able to get under delicate pieces of fish and lift them and turn them without them breaking up. But that also means it's great for everything else. Um, the front edge tips up just a little bit, so it just gets under things very naturally and very evenly and these slots let grease drain away. It's just a really sturdy, flexible, nice tool for any kind of spatula work that you're gonna do. So for situations where, say, you're gonna scramble some eggs, you don't wanna chase them around with a metal spatula, this is our favorite silicone spatula. It's nice and sturdy. It has metal inside, but a soft, flexible, bendy silicone edge. It's very durable. It's one piece, so no gunk gets in there and, and traps food in there. And this is by Dioro, and we love this thing. It's got a nice curve because it can hug the edge of that skillet, and you can scrape with it. It's firm enough at the edge. It's thin and firm enough so you can scrape, and you can really get under things and make scrambled eggs or a stir fry or you know anything you want to do in here that you're going to be moving the food around and you want it to really you know, you can check sauces and you, know, you run that through the sauce and if there's a, leaves a clean streak, you know it's getting thickened. We just think this is the best silicone spatula. And the third key kitchen tool, I would say, is a pair of good tongs. These are by OXO. This is the most versatile size at 12 inches. They have really good, neat, scalloped pinchers that meet very closely together. They're not misaligned. Um, One-handed opening, so you just push it and it opens. And this is great for things like flipping steaks or anything where you're moving, you know, vegetables around in here, asparagus, anything you're cooking. I often take these and I'm carrying food and I just <laughs> feel like a gunslinger. I whip them on my hip and they open and that's it. They're able to pick up just anything very easily and very securely. So, great pair of tongs, your best friend. On our team, we had a debate about what's the one piece of equipment you had to take to a desert island and most of us said this guy, Dutch oven. And I'll tell you why. It is really able to do almost everything the skillet can do, plus more. This pan can do it all. It's got a nice heavy lid. It's a good solid pan. It's got plenty of space. You can make pasta in here. You can cook corn on the cob. And then you get it with your tongs. Now this 12 inch length is just perfect because you can easily reach to the bottom of this pan. So this is our winner by Le Creuset. It's a seven and a quarter quart. Uh, round French oven, they call it, even though it's a Dutch oven. Um, and we have a Best Buy by Cuisinart that says six quart. This and our Best Buy are both made of enameled cast iron. And that means that they put a glass-like colored coating on the cast iron. And that seals it so you don't ever have to season this. It's very easy to clean. You can scrub it. If anything really burns in there, you can soak it with hot soapy water for a while and it will just clean right out beautifully. So these are really terrific pans that will last you so long and be really good addition to your capsule kitchen. So the last thing I'm gonna talk about, if you've been cooking in, in either your skillet or your Dutch oven, you need this. This is an instant read thermometer and it sounds like an extra and a frill, it is not. This is gonna tell you when your food is actually done and whether you're baking or roasting or frying. You want to know when the food is done. You don't want to have to guess. So this is our favorite. It's by Thermoworks. It's the Thermopen 1. It reads in one second. So if you got your hand in here and it's hot, one second. And it has great big numbers. When you turn it, the numbers also turn. It's backlit. Now this is a little pricey. So we do have a Best Buy alternative and a really low price, even better buy. The mid price one is by Lava Tools. It's quite nice, but it's not quite as terrific as this one. It's a little bit less easy to use. And then Thermoworks also makes something called the Thermopop, and it looks like a lollipop. It's very inexpensive, reads a little bit slower, but it's just as accurate. Believe me, this makes all the difference in the world to the success of your cooking. So with Hannah's six pieces for prep, these six pieces for cooking, 12 essential pieces, you can cook just about anything. The sky is the limit. So for more information about all the gear we talked about today, check out the links below or go to America 
americastestkitchen.com. What would be in your capsule kitchen? Do you have a capsule wardrobe? Let us know in the comments and make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode.